I am from Syracuse, New York. I'm from upstate New York. And um, I thought, well, I was used to the winter. I grew up in the snow belt. Then I've been to Toronto. People, Canadians don't even acknowledge the winter. Like they don't even, I was in Toronto once. I remember in Toronto one time, I saw an ice cream truck with a snowplow blade on the front. I go, these people are, are different. <laughs> Now I've done uh, I've done virtual shows. These virtual shows are funny. They've evolved. Early on, no one knew how to uh, how to work their laptops. So early on, it, I do a show for forty people. It was forty mic'd up living rooms, just forty hot mics in the living room, and people had leaf blowers to clean their couch for some reason. It was just a noisy cacophony of noise. Then people have gotten very shy. Now this is this I've never done this before. This is exciting, to me. but I've done them. Um, this is no exaggeration. Um, where every single, these are for for work related events. Every single camera and microphone off. Everyone, off. just me looking at forty names <laughs> for forty minutes, right? And um, and I, I I I do my act. I come upstairs. My wife goes, "Hey, how'd the show go?" I go, "I have no idea, and I have no <laughs> idea." <laughs> right? But then I, I, you know, I, I empathize with people because a lot of people are on camera all day. So now I've done those shows again with uh, just me looking at 40 names. And uh, I tell them, I go, hey, I know you, you guys are on camera. Did you take a little break? You're probably watching Ted Lasso. You know, hey, I'm watching a great documentary on Meerkats right now. We're all multitasking. But I've decided now when I do those shows, um, my wife goes, how the show go? I get to decide. You know, when you do a show like this, everyone knows that I do a live show. Everyone knows how the show's going. But if there's no feedback, it's up to me to decide. So now I tell my wife, I go, hon, I was on fire up there. I was on fire. <laughs> in fact, there were 40 devices. One guy named Ronnie, he logged in on his iPhone. I think he was at Home Depot, but didn't want to miss any of the show. That's how, that's that's like the, a virtual standing ovation when you add devices. You know? So that's where we are. I'm a married man. Thumbs up. Do we have married folks here? Do we have married folks here? There we go. Okay. I did it all late. Didn't get married till I was 45 years old. And I'm glad I waited because, you know, um, young people, young people, when you're young, you, you over, you, you put too much emphasis on looks. The young people just are concerned with looks. But as you mature as a person, you you look for a soulmate with money. And that's what <laughs> so uh, the biggest difference between me and my wife is uh, she is a foodie. My wife is real into restaurants and uh talking about food all the time now meanwhile i'm from a big family i, I big families you're not i'm i have uh six siblings you know so growing up we didn't care about the uh quality of the food we were more concerned with the quantity i go all right we have the spaghetti is there enough for everybody or do i have to shop my brothers out of the way what's going on here but my wife is an only child big foodie and then she married me i just eat pizza if i was left to my own I ate pizza every night and my wife is always surprised she goes what do you want for dinner i go pizza so my wife once in a while she'll really press me she go all right dinner is is your call and it can't be pizza i go okay i take the challenge i go hey let's get some thai food here's my wife no i i can't have thai food today i had thai food yesterday i go well people in thailand handle that pretty well <laughs> yeah. now the food inside the house is getting more exotic and i'll give my wife a lot of credit everything's organic in our house we have organic peanut butter hey give us a thumbs up give me a thumbs up if you've ever bought organic peanut butter twice <laughs> oh, oh david came back david came back for hard stand oh my god oh, oh wow come on this product this product's hideous can we admit that now if you've never had it our friends here if you've never had it you've led a blessed life you count your blessings there you've done <laughs> And for our friends that do like organic peanut butter, I'm going to save you a lot of money. You can make organic peanut peanut butter. This is a little pricey. Here's how you make organic peanut butter. First, you get out regular peanut butter. Just get regular peanut butter, okay? Then pour oil on top of it. Okay. <laughs> make sure you get it on the outside of the jar, too. You got to get it all over the outside. <laughs> You have to take a shower every time you handle this product. <laughs> and set it down. Then somehow remove all the peanut butter flavor. Get rid of all that flavor. Go for it. <laughs> this is Here's nuts. The final... <laughs> Here's the final step, David. David, final step. You ready? 
Then take a ten dollar bill and throw that in your fireplace. <laughs> I wish it was only ten. <laughs> my, my wife is a tinkerer though. She's always tinkering. Um, and I don't know where she gets her information. Here's what she told me one time. She goes, Hey, we're not supposed to be drinking milk as adults because we're the only species that does that. What? I go, we're the only species that can milk cows. That's part of the puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> you know, squ squirrels and raccoons. <laughs> They'd have an ice cream cone every night if it was an option. They'd have an ice cream cone, but uh, they're not disciplined. They're not focused. <laughs> Thank you, man. Oh, thanks, everybody. Thank you. So, um, I don't know how to get on this, so I'm just going to walk out of my basement and leave this on forever. I think I'll just come down. <laughs> I'm, I'm stuck in the virtual room right here.